Let's talk about instant static meshes. If I were to drag an object into the scene here, this sphere represents one draw call. Well, one draw call per material. If I put another one in, it's going to add another draw call. And for each additional sphere I put in, it's going to be an additional draw call. So draw calls are a major driver of performance issues. Each draw call is essentially an instruction to render something. And so the more you have, the more instructions the GPU has to process in order to render the frame. So you want to reduce the number of draw calls any way you can. And instant static meshes is a good way to do that. Now with the advent of Nanite, if each of these is a, an instance of a static mesh that has Nanite enabled, and they are all assigned to the same material, Nanite will compress them all down to a single draw call. So that particular advantage of instant static meshes is a little bit out of date, no longer really an issue. Uh, you can't use Nanite on everything, so I guess there may still be some edge cases where ISMs are necessary. But the scenario you might think of is like if, if you have like, you know, three objects is not a big deal, but if you had a castle and each brick was an individual brick for some reason, and you had them as in, in static meshes, then uh, the whole castle will be rendered in a single draw call. Uh, plus also you only have to pay for the single brick that you've got here in, in memory in your content browser. So it is still worth understanding. And there is one really, really useful advantage that it has that I don't think uh, is really a factor when you're using Nanite. And that is the material can generate a unique value between zero and one for each instance, which we can use to offset the UVs and give the impression that each object is actually unique. So we're gonna take a look at how to build something using instant static meshes. And what I'm gonna to need to make this happen is a material. We're gonna use one from Quixel Bridge. If you head on over here and type plank or board, as you can see, I've already done. We're going to want a surface. See if that'll do it for us. Yeah. Okay. And the one I'm going to use is going to be this white one here. You can use any of these textures so long as it has discrete boards in the texture, right? So a lot of these are going to, going to fit the bill on that. So to download this, you can select it, click download, and then the add button. Once it's downloaded, you can also come over here to this little computer icon. That's going to be your local assets, things you've already downloaded. So I can go to surfaces and voila, right? Okay. When you download it, it's going to put it in mega scans a folder called surfaces. And then in my case, it's going to be painted wooden planks. So this is going to be using this material instance here is going to be using a lot of stuff. The master material is going to be this MMS surface material. If you open it up, it's going to have some stuff in it and you can double click on some things and it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. So it can be a little bit complicated to work with these directly, but I'll show you a little hack that'll make this much easier. But before we get into the material, just want to make sure you've got it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blueprint. I right click over here. We'll go to blueprint class. I'm going to select an actor. We'll call it BP for blueprint, ISM for instant segment mesh, and then demo. I'm going to open it up. We'll head over to the event graph. Sorry, we're actually going to the construction script. The difference between the construction script and the event graph is if you want to kick off an event like on begin play or on actor overlap or whatever, then you want to, you want to hook something up here to the event graph. If you want it to happen one time, you put it in the construction script and whenever you hit compile, anything that's connected to the construction script execution pin is going to get fired off one time and one time only. So what we're going to do here is going to be on the construction script side. And the first thing that we want to do, pull off and I'm going to type in add instance static mesh. There we go. And it's going to be the static mesh component. So if you add something over here with this little plus, it's going to become a component of the blueprint. I wonder if I could, right? So you can also do it this way, but then you've got to reference it. So either way, right? It's, it's kind of the same idea, but we're going to go ahead and add one and it's going to give us an instant static mesh. Now, ultimately we're going to want to plug in a static mesh to this. And then we're going to want to create an instance and in kind of a for loop situation. But before I can do that, I need to create the piece of geometry that I am going to use as my demo. So I'm going to make a board. Let's go to the modeling mode. I'm going to make a box. We'll hit accept. We can give it a scale this way. 
And uh, I'm going to need to probably, yeah, gonna need to uh, punch that in. That's gonna be on the x-axis. I'm gonna say 0.1 there. And that's feeling pretty board-like. Let's go ahead and freeze the transforms. We'll save it. And I'm going to rename this thing SM board, SM for static mesh. So now I want to do the UVs on it. Before I do that, I'm going to open it up. We'll go ahead and enable Nanite, hit apply changes, and go to our material. And I'm just going to drag the material into the material slot. And we'll hit save. It's going to go ahead and prepare the shaders. And you can see right now there's there's like a bunch of different boards on here, and that's because I need to go in and modify the UVs on this thing. So to do that, let's grab the board here in the content browser. Actually, I think I need it selected as an actor so that we can modify the UVs. And I'm going to go to, first we'll just do like a project UVs. I'm going to set this to a box. And then whatever the biggest value is here, that's kind of the bounding box. You can see 600, that was our, we scaled it up by six. So I'm just gonna type in 600 over here and over here. So we get a consistent UV projection. And now we're gonna to go to UV editor. You can see by default, I've got like three boards over here. We'll just swing this thing over. I talked about all this in an earlier video, so if it looks unfamiliar, please refer back to that video. So just keep things nice and easy. I'm going to go ahead and select just the board pieces themselves here. Tap uh, W, E, or R. W, E, or R. Yeah, it's all the same. And if I click this little green thing here, it's going to allow me to do a scale on it. And you can see I am just dialing in the boundary there. Trying to get it kind of lined up. So, and I think I need to make these a little bit wider so I can get the whole plank in there and then I'll stretch the geometry out. You know, I don't really know exactly where the boundary is. I think I am in zero to one here. So it, it is actually the correct UV width, but I need to make this board wider. You can see what it actually is to look like, you know, best guesses. Okay, so let's save it. And we'll come back over here and just make this thing Oh, a little bit wider. That's probably fine. So let's freeze those transforms again. All right, so there's our board. A little bit of an overlap there, but whatever. It'll be okay. Just for the demonstration, let's go ahead and save our board. Can, for now, we can leave the actor in there. Let's go ahead and open up the blueprint. This doesn't know what static mesh I want to use. So we will add a set static mesh node with the board selected. We just plug it directly in. And now we're going to create a for loop. Go down to flow control and select for loop. For now, I'm just going to set the last index to 10. So we will be iterating over this loop 10 times. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to add one of these instances to the level for each loop through. So I'm going to pull off of my static mesh component there, instance static mesh component, and type in add instance. We'll plug from loop body into the uh, add instance node. Keep this stuff organized so we can keep track of what's going on. And there's gonna be this instance transform. So I'm gonna pull off here and I'm gonna type in make transform, if I can spell it. So each one of these is gonna have a unique value that will reposition each instance. So I think we're at time. We'll pick this up in the next video and take a look at how to reposition each board when we call our construction script.